The money in an anarchist society would function much like it does today, as a tool to facilitate the transfer of goods and services between two or more parties. In modern days, I believe that money has been raised to a false level of importance, far beyond its usefulness as a tool. I think uh, this is because money is necessary for survival. Um, without money, one cannot feed themselves or their families, one cannot find appropriate shelter, one cannot find appropriate clothing, one cannot find pretty much anything required for your continued survival. Um, no, I think this is wrong. I don't think money should be so, it should be necessary for survival. These necessary goods shouldn't be bought. I think that they should be distributed equitably because we have an abundance of them and we will continue to have an abundance of them and we will continue to develop technology to give, give ourselves an even higher abundance of them. I should say real quick that as far as our abilities to create or manufacture water, transport it, uh, I, don't, I haven't done the research to understand that as much. Though I do know, and this is a relatively common idea, that if you take all the money that we spend on wars and spend it on feeding people, you could feed the world multiple times over. Or something like that. Um, I don't have the exact figures, but I can look them up if absolutely necessary. Though I think we both understand this to be true. Um, and I think that these goods should be distributed equitably based on need. Now, I think that uh, money should still exist, and wages should still exist, and employment should still exist. Uh, I just think that money should be for the purpose of buying luxury goods, solely for the benefit of improving one's life past the basic minimum provided by society. Now, this basic minimum, I often like to use the placeholder of nutritional cube. Um, you know, uh, the, very, the very bare minimum that we deem is necessary for survival. And we, we, we determine all of this through a rational assessment of these things. We can determine what is necessary for survival and what would meet the basic, uh, and what would meet these basic needs. Uh, we can analyze the contribution that a good or um, an employer or an employee has for society and base their wages on a rational assessment of that. So wages would no longer be dependent on invisible hands of market forces that we only kind of understand, and of the uh, and of people's ability to make money, so their greed. So necessary goods would be distributed based on need, whereas luxury items would still pretty much be based on greed. However, the production of these and the wages handed out would be based on rational assessment. Now this brings me to the differences between many kind of anarchists. Not every anarchist agrees with the concept of money or likes the existence of markets. And that's where I tend to disagree a lot with my anarcho-communist friends, is that I think uh, that only the necessary goods be distributed solely equitably. Whereas everything else, luxury goods uh, and entertainment, I do think should come from people's work. And that's where from each according to their ability comes into play. And that phrase has always relied on an abundance of goods, I might as say, uh, just since I mentioned it earlier. But I actually, in discussing how I view money in the distribution of goods, uh, displays pretty much the primary differences between anarcho-capitalists and anarcho-communists. Um, to use a somewhat clever turn of phrase, uh, the reason why many uh, anarchists dislike anarcho-capitalism to the point of hatred is because from each according to their ability to each according to their need is a much better guiding philosophy than from each according to their gullibility to each according to their greed. Now, in an anarchist society, of course, we have to discuss how do you organize such things. And this is actually something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Coming up with methods of like cultural enforcement without having to resort to authoritarian means, like all governments are, uh, unjustified autonomous authoritarian bodies, um, that are fundamentally counterproductive to their stated purpose, I believe. Uh, though more on that can be said later, I can go into more of uh, my direct criticisms of statism in future videos. Uh, I'm trying to keep these arguments rather positive, or trying to address questions directly. So, a lot of my thinking lately has been about how to try and use reinforcement rather than punishment. Uh, 
to promote certain cultural values or to promote people to come uh, to do things like invent the necessary technology and to uh, continue providing for society when that society has already uh, have the ability to provide what is necessary for it to keep functioning. Um, now, this is something I don't have any concrete answers on, and I uh, don't really have much knowledge about how many other people would view it, except that there is the general idea that in most anarchist societies, there would be a lot of independent communes, a lot of independent, very small community-type societies. Um, and they would be run according to however that group saw best fit, so long as there wasn't an unjustified use of authority. And so the onus is on, on the people of these individual communes and societies to defend it from a future spontaneous state emergence. Though, of course, that is always the case in every system of organizing a society. The onus is on the members of a democracy to make sure that the democracy doesn't change. Else those that would seek its change back into a more authoritarian form of government would succeed. Everyone... It's the onus is upon society in all cases uh, to direct that society in the way that they do. And if they don't, then there are some failing, failings on their part for a variety of reasons. The failing might be completely understandable and, you know, they might have been significantly outmatched by some random despot. It's happened before. Um, but the point is, in, in, in any kind of society, uh, another form of organizing that society can emerge out of nowhere and take over. Uh, suddenly a democracy can turn into a dictatorship, or suddenly a dictatorship can fall to a democracy. Um, and certainly this has ebbed and flowed throughout the course of history. Um, and I believe it will continue to ebb and flow until such a point that we're transitioning between democracies, or representative democracies, or democracies that still have states that enforce their their cultural values through law, um, it would go between these democracies and a stateless society until such a point that it would ebb and flow between different kinds of anarchies or between anarchy and some other further state of society that we haven't had the chance to think about because no one's done a large-scale anarchism project and no one's been able to think from that perspective before. So there's, there's all kinds of possibilities in the, in, in the future. Um, but I think that's where anarchism lies. I don't think it's possible now be just because it's such a drastic change from what we have. I do believe that we will peacefully transition into it at some point. And I say peacefully because I believe a lot of violence uh, or, or a violent uprising of some kind is counterproductive because that would that defeats the purpose of allowing people to choose their own lives, which is the entire point of anarchism, is to offer people the choice to live their lives as they see fit. And as such, I believe that anarcho-communism best suits this purpose.